Hey everyone, Tony, KD8RTT. I want to do a uh, kind of a beginner's video, uh, getting started, kind of quick guide to the Yaesu FT450D. Um, this is my first HF radio and is uh, still my main HF radio. Um, and I really like it. I think it's a very popular and common um, beginner radio for HF um, due to its cost and features and that sort of thing. So I thought I'd do an overview of how to get started and... Um, do an explanation kind of of the, some of the connections on the back and go through the uh, the front panel buttons, um, basically what they do. Um, I want to do kind of a series of videos, that's my idea, going over different features of this radio. Um, there's a lot it can do, and it has a very good manual actually that explains it all. Um, but in this video I just want to do kind of an overview of things, um, so can you kind of get your bearing if you just got this radio or something. So we'll go ahead and start with the back panel and uh, go over the connections. All right, so here's the back panel of the radio. Um, it's pretty basic. You've got your um, power cable goes in here, um, it's, and that's easy to do. There's only one way it fits in. Um, so you just kind of plug that in. No problems there. Get your standard antenna connector. Um, again, you just screw that in. I'm going to keep that out of the way, though. Um, and I'll get rid of the power cable for now. You, of course, got your big fan in the back. Um, you shouldn't really need to worry about, except uh, maintain airflow. You know, don't block that. Let's see. So here you got your data um, connection. Uh, so if you want to do um, the data modes, basically, a lot of digital modes, um, you can make a cable with that. I think you can buy one also. Um, and there's all these pinouts. The pinouts for all of these are in the manual. So, uh, this is your tuner connection cable. If you've got an external um, like automatic antenna tuner, this will interface with it. This is for a linear amp um, to control it. Um, I don't really use any of those three anymore. I use this one, then I got signal link, the data one I use, but now I have a signal link, so I don't use that. I use the front connector, but um, they're there. They're good, and it's nice to have. Oops, sorry. <laughs> um, then you got the cat connector. That's for interfacing it with a computer for a computer-based control. I use that all the time. That's a standard RS-232 serial connection, um, and that's pretty common. We have an external speaker connection and a ground lug, and that's basically it on the back. Um, so as far as getting started, all you really need to do is connect your power and your antenna. Um, the other things are kind of uh, extra things you can add, so you don't need them. So, um, and while we're talking about the back, I thought I'd do a quick kind of overview on the bottom. There's a couple things. Of course, you've got your nice uh, feet that hold the radio up. And then also, for a good way to get this in the frame. Um, let's see. Here you've got this switch. It's, kind of, it's recessed in there. Um, that's for uh, updating the firmware of the radio. You need to use that. That sets the mode. I believe I've never uh, used it, but that's important to note that's where it is. So, um, and as you can see, the vents, make sure you keep these vents clear um, and clear of debris and all that sort of thing. On the side here, you can put the uh, uh, bracket, let's see, put on the frame, the bracket to mount it or a handle. Those are both for sale aftermarket. Um, so now I'll go ahead and go for the front panel. And uh, I'll get everything hooked back up so you can see it live. All right, so here's the front panel of the radio. Um, you'll notice the mic is disconnected. I wanted to show that um, separately, so we'll start with that. This is the supplied microphone and cable. I'll show it all in the frame. Um, cable completely disconnects. Um, connect same connector on both ends. You'll notice this is a standard RJ45 deal, but you cannot use a regular Ethernet cord. Um, they're not wired properly. Um, so they won't work, but you can make your own, I guess, and that would work. Um, that's pretty easy to plug in. Just kind of plug it in there and then into the bottom of the mic. All right. So as for the mic itself, it's got a few buttons on there. Um, of course, you have to push the talk. Um, you've got these up, down, and fast, um, which I'll explain. Well, I guess I can. There's a, there's a fast button on the actual radio itself down here. Um, but when you, uh, so basically the up down will let you scroll up through frequencies. Hit that split. If you hit fast, it'll do a bigger jump. Hit it again to get out of it. Um, basically, of course, the mic itself is in this kind of grilled part. 
On the back, you've got a tone switch. Um, at, at position one, it's a flat filter. EQ was flat. This, if you put it in position two, it rolls off the base a bit. You've kind of got your nub here for hanging it, uh, if you'd like. So, microphone's pretty easy to deal with. Above the microphone connector, you've got your key connection for a CW key and the headphone jack. Um, that's pretty standard stuff. Um, and we'll just kind of go from left to right, I guess. So, you got the power button here. I'll turn the radio off for a second. To turn it on, you're just going to hold it for a couple of seconds. I think it's like a second. Turns it on. Same thing, turn it off. Hold it for a second or two. Turns it off. Um, beneath it, you've got the shift knob. Um, this, uh, it shifts the IF's DSP passband to reduce any interfering signal, basically. Um, I'm hooked up to a dummy load, but you can kind of hear, <clears throat> you can hear that kind of difference through it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, that's what that does. I don't really use that much. Um, next up is the DSP button. Um, so by clicking it once, you'll see this arrow pops up, um, and then clicking it again will cycle through the different DSP options. To use one, you're going to use this multi-purpose knob. This is used for a lot of stuff on the radio. Press it, it'll let you go through it, turn it to set it, whatever. Press it again if you want to turn it off. Um, if you want to leave it on, you press it, you know, whatever, set how you want it, and then um, just hit DSP until it goes away. And then that's all set on. Again, just press it again. You can turn that off. Um, I might go more depth into the DSP on a future video. Because um, that's a pretty good topic on its own. But um, This knob, but it controls a lot of things, um, including I'll do some frequency jumps, and I'll get to that in a little bit. Um, above it is the IPO ATT. So that's, that basically will let you bypass the uh, preamp and turn on the attenuator. So it's kind of a, a button has two purposes. Uh, if you press it, if it's you know if it's standard default where both the ATT and the IPO are set off, that means the RF preamp is on and the attenuator is off. Pressing it once will turn the preamp off. Um, pressing it again will turn the preamp on and then the attenuator on. And pressing it again will turn the preamp uh, off and the attenuator on. So just be mindful that IPO um, doesn't mean the preamp. It basically means the preamp is bypassed. It's kind of uh, confusing. Um, but basically, I'm usually leaving them both set to off. Um, that's kind of the standard deal. Next to that, you've got the noise blanker, which again will notify you when it's on. Um, it's good for moving pulsing signals like ignition noise. Next to that's the automatic gain control. Um, as you can see, you can set auto slow, fast, slow, or if you hold it for a couple seconds, it'll turn itself off, and then uh, you can press it, and it'll come back on. Beneath it, you've got your mode buttons. These will flip through your sidebands, CW, AM, FM, data. Um, this is a, a menu error, why it's showing uh, lower sideband data, um, but that could be fixed somewhere else um, in a menu, but this cycles through. It's pretty easy. Um, Below it's your clarifier, which will let you slightly um, offset your receive frequency. So to use it, you'll press it and then use the main tuning knob here. Let me get that back where it should be, otherwise I'll forget about it. Okay, and the keyer button's next to it to activate the keyer. Of course, the keyer button will only turn on when you're in CW mode. Um, and then you've got the two band buttons. So simply band up. Goes up in frequency, band down, down in frequency. Um, it'll go to where you were last at on that band, which is kind of convenient. Beneath that, you've got these two buttons with A's and B's. So, as you can see, we're on VFO A right now. If you press this, the A slash B, it'll go to VFO B. Um, if you go to, if you press A equals B, it'll set VFO B to what VFO A is. So now you can see they're the same. Um, I find that it's really useful when I'm setting up split operation, which again will probably be a future video. But that's really nice to have. Um, you've got this fast button, which just like it's on the keypads, it'll change the tuning speed so that you can see kind of what it's going at now. If I hit fast, it'll increase much faster. This will also work 
with this knob. So I said this is a tuning knob. Um, this will do steps that you can set by the menu. Bigger steps than the uh, main tuning knob. And this has like, a nice click to it. Hit fast, and that's what fast on. It's the same thing with fast off. Obviously, it just changes the split with fast on. Um, then you've got the lock button, which when you press that, won't let you change the frequency at all. So you don't bump it. That's kind of nice. Press it again to turn the lock off. And of course, it'll light up when the lock is on. And it's nice about this radio. It has a lot of feedback. So a lot of very clear feedback at that. So you'll know what settings are on and off all the time and won't really forget about one. Next to that, you've got the tune button. This radio has a built-in anten automatic antenna tuner. Um, it'll tune about a 3 to 1 SWR down. Um, so it's really kind of good for fine-tuning a dipole or something. Um, but I use it a lot. So if you press t tune... Uh, why aren't we turning on? Probably because I'm not in somewhere I can transmit. <laughs> the tuner will only turn on when you transmit, which is also kind of helpful if you're forgetting the band edges. Um, so as you can see I'm where I'm at, if you, t if you roll... If you tune outside of it, the tuner will, sh will shut off. But basically, the tuner does a 5-watt carrier and auto-tunes. So to turn the tuner on and off, you just hit the tune button and the light comes on. To actually tune it somewhere, you'll hold tune for a second. You'll see it kind of go nuts, and then it'll show it's tuned. Um, if it just beeps, um, it means it can't tune it at all. It's way too high of an SWR. It's a nice feature. It's easy to use. Um, just make sure you're not tuning up over somebody else um, if, you're, if you're new at that. But I can uh, go into tuning in another video also. Nice and convenient though. Easy to use. I like the tuner for what it is. Beneath it you've got the squelch slash RF gain um, knob. So um, you can set it to use it as a squelch. Um, it's standardly an RF gain and uh, of course uh, it helps uh, shift the noise down if you turn that up. So I leave it up all the way basically. Um, you've got the F function button. So this is used to access some of the features on these buttons, as well as access the menu. If you hold it for a second, you'll access a huge menu. This is like the main menu of the radio. There's a ton of stuff in here, um, including RF power, which is typically where I have it waiting at. Um, and I scroll through it, you use this, the same DSP select knob. It's kind of the main one. And to enter a menu option, you'll press it. And you'll press it again to get out, and then hold this again <clears throat> to get out of the menu. Um, it's kind of a little process, but you'll get used to it pretty quickly. So that's the function button. The function button also, when you press it, and then one of these buttons, um, it'll also activate their second feature, which we'll get to in a second. Um, you've got the AF gain, which is your volume knob, of course. Pretty standard. We've got this dim meter button. So here we go with the dual function ones. If you press it, so as you can see, right now I'm displaying SWR. If you press it, it'll change it to power out, then automatic level control. Um, so that's nice. You can quickly go from checking the power out to the SWR to the ALC. Um, and that's when you're transmitting, of course. Otherwise, it just uses, otherwise, that meter displays the signal strength. That's also your S meter. You see your S and your symbol, or your units. If you hit a uh, function and then it, it'll change the, um, should change the brightness of the screen, how dim it is. So it's nice and you just press it to get out of there. So then you've got all the um, kind of function buttons. And these guys have a few features and it's, it's nice that they're located where they are. So we'll start out with the CS voice button. Uh, if you press it, um, if you just press it, It'll activate a function that you program, um, which, let's see, I might not have anything programmed in there. CQ Field Day. Okay, there Kilo you go. Kilo Romeo Gall. CQ Field Day. Kilo. So there you go. I was using it for Field Day last year. I recorded, uh, this can also do recordings, and I recorded it in my CQ. So I just pressed that button, and it would transmit it. Uh, again, I'm transmitting into a dummy load, so no problems there. Um, if you hit F and then that button, um, it will announce the current operating frequency. One, four, point, zero, four, one, eight, LSD. But, and the mode, which is kind of nice. I'd never use that, but it's there. Um, 
Yep. Um, below it, you've got the Home RCL button. Um, if you press this button, it'll recall the Quick Memory Bank. Um, as you can see there, what you can set up. Uh, if you press it again, it'll go back to the mode it was in, in our case, VFO. If you press F first, and then it, it'll go to what you said as your home frequency. Um, so, you can set that up. Beneath it, you've got the step and split button. Now, this is the button I probably use the most of these all. Um, if you press it, uh, just press it without the F, it'll activate split. Basically, it'll take your current, so in my case, VFO A, um, this is what I'm receiving on. If I transmit, it'll switch to VFO B for the transmit. So that's why I was saying where it's useful to help the VFOs. That's how you do split on this radio. Press it again and turn split off. Um, and make sure you look for that light because it's easy to forget that it's on and then you wonder why people aren't responding to you. Um, if you press the F button first, um, it'll enable the, uh, um, it'll change the, it should change the step. It'll, it's the, it, it'll change the, you know, the set step for the DSP select knob. So, all right, turn the volume back off. Um, now we'll go back up to here to the MWVM button. This toggles between the VFO and the memory. I don't have any memory set up. Um, I never used the memory bank, but that's how you go between them. Um, press F first. It'll copy the current VFO frequency into the memory channel, into the into the currently selected memory channel. Uh, beneath that is the STO Vox button. Um, it'll if you press if you just press it on its own, it'll copy the current information to the quick uh, memory bank. Um, and then if you hold F first and then press it, it'll activate Vox. So voice activated transmission, uh, of course, for SSB, FM, and AM. Beneath that is the PMS scan button. If you just press it, um, it'll start scanning up and then press it again to stop it. Um, if you press F first, it'll um, use a programmable scan, basically, which is currently off. Um, it'll let you activate, um, it, you can set up a, basically a range of where you want to scan that's programmable. So that's basically the uh, general outline of all the features, front button features at least. Like I said, there's a huge menu where a lot of the stuff is, um, you're able to access it. But this radio is nice that a lot of the common features are right on the front panel. I really like that. I rarely have to go into the menu. Um, and if I do, it's just for a setup thing. It's not constantly. So I like that a lot. Um, so now I'll just do a quick how to get started. You just bought this radio. Um, you just connected everything up. Let's get on the air. So basically all you have to do is turn the radio on and you should be greeted by the VFO um, on whatever frequency it defaults to. I can't remember what the radio comes at. Um, but then you can just switch through your bands. So find where you wanna go. Um, let's say we're going up to the, I don't know, general portion of 20 meters somewhere. Um, all right, I'm gonna listen to it with the volume knob. Again, I'm in a dummy load, so you're not gonna hear anything. But, um, you're basically ready to go. Um, now make sure your, your boat is correct, not lower sideband. So upper sideband, for instance, the tuner's on, and you can just go ahead and start transmitting. Um, it's really that easy on this radio. Um, it probably defaults, I believe it defaults to 100 watts when you first set it up. That's a menu setting to change that. Um, just look for RF power in that menu. Um, and mine's tuned down about 30 watts right now. But it's that easy to get started. Um, you know, it's really turn it on, find your frequency, set your mode, activate the tuner if you need it and uh, you're good to go. That's the great thing about this radio. It's really easy to use, so. Um, all right, I think I've gone on a little bit long enough with this video. Try to give you a basic overview of, you know, you just got it. What is all this stuff? How do I use it? Um, feel free to leave comments, ask questions. I'm happy to help. Um, like I said, I, I kind of want to do a series of videos with these. I got a suggestion to do that um, since it's a pretty popular radio. All right, sorry about that. I got cut off by the video. Um, but yeah, yeah, like I was saying, I'm going to do kind of a series of different things about this radio. Um, probably outline different functions. Um, but yeah, let me know what you want to see. 
Um, remember to subscribe and uh, thumbs up this video. And uh, we'll see you guys later. 73, have a good day.